Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Leadership Void Podcast. I'm Enrique with my co-host, Vince, to bring you the best in our veteran, military spouse, and first responder community. And Vince will introduce today's guest. Uh, thanks, Enrique. Happy August, everyone. We're excited. We are here with Chef Erin Roth. Guess what? She's the founder, owner, and CEO of Miss Joe's Petite Eats in McLean, Virginia. So we're just so happy to have Erin with us today. It is a great month of August because it's what also her birthday month. But first, let's just say happy birthday, first and foremost. And also, Erin, let's just start off. Tell us a little bit about you. Well, I'm, I'm originally from Mississippi, a little town called Enterprise. I, uh, I attended Alcorn State University. That's where I uh, uh, came to the ROTC program. And I got commissioned there in uh, December 93. I uh, went to the Army uh, for 24 years and 15 days. I retired in 2017, started um, attended, started to attend the L'Academy de Cuisine Pastry School there in Gettysburg, Maryland, did a year there, and uh, I started my business right before I retired. So Mrs. Joe is not me, obviously, it's our mother. Uh, right before I decided to retire from the military, I said, hey, mom and dad, I'm going to retire, and I think I'm going to you know, do cupcakes on the side. And my mom was like, well, sweetie, whatever you decide to do, you'll be successful. This was November of 15. And less than a month later, she and my dad, while on vacation, she passed suddenly. And so our whole family dynamic changed. You know, we had a new normal. You know, our mother was the center of the universe and we all orbited around her. And so this is how I grieve. I want the world to know what a great woman she she was to us and and how much her legacy still means to her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren so mrs joe is my eternal tribute to my mom what a touching story and a tribute uh so uh, bless you for that and bless you for the years of service that you provided the army and our nation and you talk about mississippi i spent a good six years in biloxi and gulfport so i'm from that neck of the wood as well and that's where i get my sweet tea habit from 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 down there in the Gulf Coast. But you you mentioned the inspiration. Tell us about the company, Miss Joe Petit Eats. So uh like I said, um my mom passed in December and so I was in a funk for a while and one day something said get up off your butt and start that business. So the first business was Miss Joe's Petit Sweets because then I didn't envision doing anything other than sweets. My mom had to say, if you want to hear a guy laugh, tell him your plan. And I was doing an event for a business in Reston, Virginia, not far from here. And they were like, uh, hey, do you do? I was doing their grand opening and they had uh, requested a uh, dessert buffet. And they were like about two months out. Hey, Aaron, do you do heavy hors d'oeuvres? And a little ding, 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 Oprah calls it an aha moment. I was like, I do now. And so when I went corporate catering, that just changed our bottom line tremendously. And so I started to consider, okay, let me do something else besides desserts. And I'm so glad I did because that set me up for here. And ironically, how I even got here by the grace of God, all in one day, it was a Thursday. I never forget it. It was in, uh, and I got an email from someone saying, hey, hey, uh, well, actually, one of my mentors like, hey, would you be interested in taking over the cafe in Tyson's Corner at Penn Fed? I'm like, sure. How much will that be? And so I called and talked to her and, and talked to the senior VP. I'm like, OK. And then that same day was the day I got a, a DM from a casting agent for Crime Scene Kitchen asking me would I be interested in competing on a TV show all in one day. And so that changed the trajectory of our life. And so. When I went through the proposal process and got the location and got voted in, I changed the name from MS to MRS because my youngest niece was like, grandma was married to granddaddy. It should be MRS, not MS. But I was doing it as a thing down south. You call people Ms. or Ms. Uh, Ms. or Mr. And so, um, so that's what I was going. So when I got this location, I said, let me go ahead and change the name now. So it's now Mrs. Joe's Petite Eats because we do everything else size sweet so yeah so that's how i hear now and we uh, did our grand opening june 7th of last year and just celebrated our one year anniversary and we're still here and growing and still going strong look i want to <laughs> honor you right here too <laughs> yeah congratulations on your first year anniversary and and 
you know, as you said, you know, you want to make like God laugh, you know, tell him your plan. So <laughs> definitely he's laughing, he's crying of joy, tears of joy coming down. Uh, and yeah. we would love to know and share with our audience of uh, your entrepreneurship challenges or lessons learned you'd like to share with them today. You know, when you when you have a vision for your life or a plan, you should be very careful who you share that with. Uh, I say that because there's some people who have a problem for every solution. And so they will steal your joy if you let them. And so just be careful about your 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 idea because it's your vision. It's not anybody else's your vision. So hold on to that. Surround yourself with like-minded and like-hearted people. Being an entrepreneur, small business owner, it's a lonely journey. You're the king of your hill and it's just, you, you will never work hard again in your life than working for yourself. And so it has been, a tremendous journey, a great journey, but advice, I would say, one of the things I learned from a mentor was, and this is for everyone, hire slow, fire fast. If you're going to do anything else, hire slow and fire fast because you will waste time, efforts, and resources on people who, who, shouldn't, who you shouldn't spend that time and energy on. And so that's one of the biggest lessons. Two, before you jump out there, um, as far as being an entrepreneur, small business owner, and that's and that's your only income, consider saving up three, four, maybe a year's month of your expenses. Um, also, too, when you become a small business owner, you can't do a lot of things you used to do. You have to double down on the business. You can't do elaborate vacations, start lavish gifts. When I started my business in 2016, I, I stopped shopping for myself. I stopped shopping for myself. Not that I was a big shopper anyway, but I started focusing on the business. I started buying equipment and different things for the business. I started collecting things. I saw I needed this. I saw I needed that. People started gifting me with, I had a fellow veteran, Fallon Williams. She, um, she used to be a baker. She gave me all her cake pans, chafing dishes, all the stuff that she wasn't using anymore. She gifted me with that. And other people have gifted me with things. Even, you know, your boy here, you know, Vince, he gifted me with, you know, for my, so it's just, there are people that will support you. Stay close to those because there are those who will not support you. And so, and that's just the nature of life. And I also would say, manage the level of expectation from your family, friends, and loved ones about your vision, you know, you can't get upset because they can't see your plan, maybe because it's not their vision. So just manage, not everybody will be for you and that's okay too. But you should be your biggest, 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 biggest advocate for you, for your business. You should be the biggest person, your biggest advocate. And also too, we say this thing in the army, there are no atheists in the foxhole. Um, for me, my faith, my faith in God has gotten me through this because there are some days um, and nights that, you know, cause you to bring pause. And if you don't have a rock or something to lean to positive, you will go down a slippery slope and you won't recover. And for me, it's been my faith in God. So, so faith, uh, support system, fight, hire slow, fire fast. All I could say is all of that. <laughs> right so it it was on point i, I really resonated with the, the your environment you have to be careful who you bring into that circle uh they are some people with problems for every solution and and definitely uh faith right faith uh i was talking about that this morning uh prior to the show faith is a cornerstone yes and it is those that don't have it uh, they have a lot of challenges, uh, but those that do can see ways out right into that uh, vision and solutions come your way. So happy for you for getting those calls about the show, about uh, uh, the, the location. I mean, it just starts to flow when it's for you. It's for you. And I tell you, it it's evident that, uh, that everything was set up uh, for your success. Now, you talked about the the evolution and how things started coming together. So what's on the horizon for Mrs. Joe Petit? You know, um, 
when I was in dog tag uh, fellowship program, you know, Vince is a fellow alum. I remember we were doing this, this writing and it was like vision and it's like, write your vision. And I remember I was writing it down and Claire, she don't know where dog tag, but Claire was like, Aaron, think bigger, think bigger. And I was like, huh? And no one ever encouraged me to think bigger than my normal, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And so I coined the term, I'm building my empire. So that's what I say now. I'm building my empire and I'm strategic about everything. So yes, we have, you know, the brick and mortar, we have catering. Now I'm looking at my, and I call this location, my first location. And that's purpose, you know, on purposeful to say this is my first location. We are looking to expand. How far out? The sky's the limit. I'm even considering even setting up something in Ramstein Air Force Base because I see the military community out there. They need a place that can do cakes and stuff that we're used to. So um, also we're looking in the fall to start Mrs. Joe's Jams, Jellies, and Relishes because my mom made her own jams and jellies. And it took me a while to start eating store-bought jams and jellies because once you have homemade, it's just so hard to get to. And so um, that we're also looking at a lot of other things as well. We're looking at doing the uh, delivery uh, options for our business, Uber Eats, Grubhub, things along that line. So yeah, we're definitely looking into getting more corporate buildings uh, to be the answer for other corporations as well. You know, your mom is smiling down at you as she sees this evolution and the empire come to flourish. And so it's amazing what you're doing, uh, Aaron. I love it and love hearing everything that's in the future and the forefront, even going overseas to Germany, right? Who would have thought that, right? Yeah, <laughs> you exactly. put it out there in the universe and love it. So what do you do to continue to prepare yourself to sharpen your skill sets to aid you to thrive in your professional life? Obviously, you know, church, you know, my, my church family, but I would say you have to constantly look at improving. You know, you, you don't know everything. And if you know everything, then you won't be living. But I take a lot of classes online. I do a lot of uh, webinars, some just different things in the food industry, things along business, things along, you know, things in that level as well. So I'm constantly doing, in fact, I did a thing last night with Veterans, Veterans Growing America. Donnell Jones is the president, and uh, he had a webinar about how to market and brand your business. And so I'm always doing, and that's free, you know? And so um, always looking to ways to expand my knowledge base and just do better because, you know, I'm not, I don't want to reinvent the wheel, but there's so much things I do. I do a lot of that. I do a lot of reading. I do a lot. I'm constantly, constantly working on the business. And great strategy, uh, reading getting things in order, having things come together through the resources of other veterans, like uh, Veterans Growing America, Donnell, love the brother. Uh, and, and and I tell you that there are so many resources for us to be able to succeed. There's no reason for us not to, uh, you know, it, it really is a choice. So many of us are willing to to help. Now, when it comes to things you learned along the way, especially in the military and then those that translate it into your business. Now, what advice did you receive that you would like to pass on to an emerging leader today? Get a plan, get a plan. And it's not going to be perfect. Uh, but write down the plan, write down the plan on what you want to do. If you write it out, you can see it. You can visualize, okay, write the plan. Okay. This is what I need to do. And then we also do a thing in the military called backwards planning. Okay, how do I get here? And so how do I set myself up? What do I need to do? I need to get smart in this arena, finances for businesses. I need to be smart in this one, employees, how to deal with employees. So there's things you have to realize you have to set yourself up for success. What do you need to do? Who do I need to know? But more importantly, who needs to know me? And so that's where networking comes into play. You have to get out there and in the industries and then in the arenas that your business is related to and meet people because you will meet someone and I do it all the time. I've seen it in my business. I've met people one in one aspect and wouldn't see them to two years later and they still remembered me and they would reach out to me. Hey, Aaron, can you do this for me? And so it's so important to network, to get out there, people to know you out there. You can have the best product in the world but if no one knows about it, 
how can they buy from you or and so and then become a subject matter es expert in whatever you're going to do become the expert become the person that people will go to in your, your business or whatever you're doing because that means okay this person has studied they understand this they research they they understand this. they know that people will start coming to you for advice for whatever and so you got to become an expert in your field, whatever that field is, but become the expert. Always know what's coming out on the horizon um, in your area and, and try to foresee things. And I say that because in the baking industry, what, you know, I food, I'm always listening to the news as far as agricultural things along that line, because remember when eggs were expensive, they were expensive for you. They were hella expensive for me. And so I buy an average 30 dozen eggs a week on a slow on a slow day. And so when I saw the eggs were getting ready to increase, I bought more eggs. Things along like when back about 10 years ago, it was a typhoon. When I forgot what 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 country, it, it affected the vanilla crop, the vanilla bean crop. So the prices of vanilla went up. And so there's things you have to stay focused. You have to stay to see how things will affect you. Obviously with, with COVID, you know, you have to not be in a in a in a clamshell. You have to just focus and and look a look past the horizon. And you gotta, I'm not gonna say expect, but forecast certain things. Okay, this is going on right now. How will that affect me? How can I get ahead of it? And how can and how can I prepare myself for the future? No, absolutely. Great advice. You know, sage advice there, uh, Aaron. Of course, have that plan, you know, see that forecast because you have to know what's coming, especially being a business owner. You know, who would have thought the eggs prices would have skyrocketed, right? <laughs> <laughs> Here you are not even thinking of that. But, you know, you forecast is very uh, admirable. I love the fact that you are thinking ahead of what's the future for for everything you're doing. So you you stay afloat versus sink and react to that so great advice there uh talk about your 24 years of, of military experience right what memorable leadership aha moment you would love to share with with our audience today i would say one of the important things i learned was not from a great officer or a great nco it was things i learned from the bad ones and i say that and i don't want to use the term bad um lack of leadership we'll call it that um people had lack of leadership and there was things and i saw how they led people and i saw how they managed people poorly and i learned from that and when i learned from it this is how i will not be i will not be that person I would not be this because I because I was on the receiving and I saw how other people were on the receiving end of of terrible leadership skills, and I learned from that that I would not be that officer. I would not be that clueless. I would not be that shallow about how decisions I make as a leader affects has a second, third, and fourth order effects. And so I would say, being in the military, that was the biggest thing I, I learned from. Is from people who have poor leadership skills, and that's how I will not be. And even in my business here, I carry a lot of them the same leadership styles. I treat people as I would want to be treated. Um, I give clear and concise communication, so there's no room for error. It's sort of like Chris Tucker. Do you not understand the words coming out of my mouth? So one of those things. And so I leave no room for error. And so. You, you, you will never be able to say, well, I'm not sure what she was thinking or what her intent was because it's very clear. And so I would say being in the military is one of the things I learned from the, the poor leadership, what I will not be. I will not be that person. Yeah, and nobody wants to be that person, but, uh, but they are, right? And so you're going to learn from effective and ineffective leadership exactly. either way. So that's the, that's a, a great point. You mentioned the challenges in business, especially with the produce, right? And things that are being affected across the world, not in your backyard, but you do have to have eyes on things that will affect you. 
So what are certain strategies you use with, with you and your team to deal with change and challenges? I would say one of the largest things I do is I don't have just one vendor. If you only have one person you go to for certain things and something shuts that company down, then then you stuck like Chuck and trying to maneuver and figure out things. And so I'm always looking at, okay, I get this from this vendor and, and I, my backup plan. So I have two, three or four backup plans uh, because we buy so much things at a time. And so if this vendor is out of chicken, which was another thing that, you know, we, we, we've been hit with is the chicken. I know, right? You guys don't deal with that. You don't buy as much chicken as I do. And so I, I don't have all my eggs in one basket. I have different vendors that I, and so that's one thing. Two, we forecast here in our, in our cafe future events. Like this week, we've had three events. And so before, you know, you don't start planning the day of the event, we start planning weeks out. Okay, how this is how we're going to make sure that we have enough for that and we get this for that. And so we forecast because we also want to take care of not just our corporate clients, our catering clients, but our clients that come in. So nobody gets, you know, the leftovers. We'll make sure everybody is well taken care of. And so that's, you know, forecasting, you know, being strategic thinkers and say, hey, we might be out of bread. Let's go ahead and put this on the order now for a week later. So we will never be out of different breads. And so, yeah, it's just, I, I have so many vendors that we go to and I sort of rotate to make sure that, you know, nothing's changing on how they, or how the order process is, how the delivery process is. And so, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta stay woke as they say, you, you, you can't be asleep. <laughs> Stay woke, folks, because it is coming to Germany. It's coming around the world. Mrs. Joe's Petite Eats, folks. Okay. Please, <laughs> Chef Aaron Roth, it was such a pleasure having you. For those listening in, how do they get a hold of you or how they go about going to one of your great establishments around the world? Well, right now, our Facebook and our Instagram is um, Eat at Mrs. Joe's. That's E-A-T-A-T-M-R-S-J-O. Our website is eat at Mrs. Joe.com, E A T A T M R S J O.com. So we kept it real simple this time around. So all our handles and our, everything is eat at Mrs. Joe. Outstanding. And folks, we're going to have that as part of the video and show notes so you can get a hold of Chef Aaron Roth and her business. And hey, get something, something good to eat. I'm Indeed. telling you, when it comes to eat, Vince knows. I'm there. So, <laughs> so it's been, it's been such a, a, a wonderful pleasure to have you folks. If you want to get a hold of the leadership void podcast, the leadership void at gmail.com is where you'll send that correspondence. Vince and I will curate any of your requests. If you have a specific leadership topic you want covered or a guest featured, you will send it by those means. And absolutely. And also we just want to say happy early birthday, Aaron Roth to you. This beautiful thing, another beautiful blessing year that you have affording forward of you. And also, I want to say to all our sponsors, thank you for being there. Triple Nickel, uh, VEI and Favor for taking care of our show and everything you're doing there, too. But today was all about, guess what? If you can see, Miss Joe's <laughs> Petite yeah. and Eats and Aaron. So thank you, Aaron, for being on the show. And good God bless and have a great day. Thank you guys for having me. You guys take care. <laughs>